BGA, Greenbelt, third Q syllabus. Everything you need to know. In this, there are seven throws, four arm locks, a couple of entries to those arm locks, and just a little bit of vocab to finish on. Haragoshi. Haragoshi, we're taking a sleeve of her grip. This is Ukigoshi, but at the same time, I'm going to sweep the leg. So we step in, my hip is perpendicular to her hip, and my back comes in, sweep, try and keep my balance, to throw the Haragoshi sweeping hip. Hanegoshi. Now with Hanagoshi, similar to Haragoshi, we're using Ukigoshi hip, as in I'm perpendicular to her. As I step in, instead of sweeping, I'm going to keep contact with my leg on her leg. My leg is slightly bent along her thigh and all the way connected down her calf so that I can pick her up. One thing about this throw, if you're much bigger than your opponent, it's completely fine to take a high grip. If you're much smaller than your opponent and they're much taller than you, it's completely okay to take a belt grip, come around the back, the exact same throw. Uchimata. Uchimata. Similar to all my hip throws, this is an ogoshi hip, meaning that when I come in, my hips are square to her. I am not perpendicular, I'm square to her. Once I'm here, I have my knees bent. My front leg, what was my front leg, sweeps, throwing her to Uchimata. Again, just completely okay to take a grip up here, down here. Some people will even do it from here, but traditionally it's done for sleeping on her. Uchimata in the thigh point. Sasai Tsurikomiyashi. Sasai Tsurikomiyashi, the important bit is so I'm stepping past my partner and my foot is coming to their ankle. This angle, a step past, big pull with whichever side I'm going to be blocking her on, straight onto her ankle, I'm stepping into her employee. Thinking about this, I can do this on the lapel side. This is the side that tends to be done in competition, and the side I prefer, but it's completely okay to do it on sleeve side as well. It's the exact same technique. You should be able to do it on both sides. He's a Garuma. Well, he's a Garuma, very similar to Sasa Tsurikomiyashi. I'm stepping out, but I'm not stepping towards my partner. I'm stepping out and away, pulling them on to my foot. My foot is on their knee, just below the kneecap, approximately, rather than being on the ankle. But the important aspect of this throw is that we're pulling them onto us, rather than stepping in. Similar to Sasa Tsurikomiyashi, this can be done on both sides, with either the lapel or the sleeve. So I'll do it on the other side just so you get to see what that looks like. A Kuriyashi Barai. I'm taking the foot that is on the sleeve side of my partner and pushing it into the ankle on the other side. So their foot connects and takes both feet away. I'm using my sleeve hand to push in. I'm using my lapel hand to turn them like a bus wheel. One more time. Supporting my partner as they fall. Morate Eri Sienagi. <laughs> 
Nuroti Eri Sinangi means two-handed lapel shoulder throw. It's very similar to Nuroti Sinangi, except instead of holding the lapel on the opposite side to the sleeve that I'm holding, I'm going to hold the cross grip where I'm holding the same side as my sleeve. Other than that, it's a very similar movement. Stepping, Zushi, elbow comes across. Here's a Katami. With Hisa Katami, I'm using my knee to attack my partner's elbow. I trim out when I'm underneath and there between my legs. This exposes her arm when it's straight. I keep hold of the wrist, put my knee on the joint, the elbow, and I push down, creating a lever on her elbow and keeping it straight. Ude Gatami. In Ude Gatami, if I'm beside my partner, I have her in a hold down, etc. She comes up, tries to grab something on me, she's exposed, her arm is straight. I then two hands on the elbow, and I sit up, and I pull the elbow into this empty space, creating the arm. Wacky Gatami. Wacky Gatami, she's armpit hold, I'm taking my armpit, putting it on the back of my partner's elbow, and controlling their wrist with both hands, and trying to keep their elbow and shoulder on the ground, I lift up their wrist. I'm not leaning on the shoulder and trying to pull her arm up like this. This is an arm lock, this is illegal in judo, it's a shoulder lock. I'm trying to keep pressure on the elbow, keeping it on the ground so that when I pull up, it's a very small movement to face the top. Juji Gatami. With Juju Katami, I have one leg over her chest, other leg over her face. There's a couple of variants of this you might see of people with just a knee, etc. But the grading most people will do like this. My butt is really close to my partner's shoulder, so that their arm is pointing straight up. I then, with both hands, take control of the wrist, leaning back nice and slowly. Once the arm's fully extended, I use my hips. Push up, again creating pressure on the joint. There are a few different entries you need to know for Juju Katami. One is from on your back. I'm going to grab the sleeve and the wrist of whichever arm I want to attack. I then shrimp out. I can put my foot on the ground. With the hand that's free, I'll come under the leg. And finally, this leg that isn't on her stomach already, Comes up on her face, sit up, and we're in the position we can do Juju Gatami. There are three entries when your opponent is on all fours. All of them are going to start from me on top. I'm going to be attacking the right arm. In the first one, my opponent has exposed her arm. I take it, and I'm just going to sit backwards, controlling my partner. Get into the position that we've already been in, and finish it. The other two entries both come from the same position. I'm on her back, my leg comes all the way through, and my top of my foot is going to hook my partner's thigh. I'm in a tripod, I've got an Uki's arm. These are both referred to as Juju Roll. One of them is the reverse roll. No one knows which one's which. If my partner sits up, I put my leg on their face and we roll backwards into Juju Tami. If, because my partner knows that's coming, she keeps her face on the ground, really pushing forwards. I allow her to roll over. Once again, coming through into Juju Katami. Important aspect of Green Belt is this is the first time you're introduced to arm locks. 
So that's a submission in judo. You'll notice through all of these demonstrations that my partner, whenever they felt the technique was applied correctly, they would tap, preferably me or the floor, something very loud and obvious so that I'm able to let go of my partner. An important part of green belt is that you are able to safely apply techniques in a way that is safe to your partner and also that you understand when it's time to tap in a safe and compliant way so that you keep yourself safe. There's also a couple of pieces of vocab in this. One is Ren Rakuwaza. Ren Wakuwaza is any combination of techniques moving in opposite directions. For example, forwards technique into a backwards technique. I'll demonstrate hip on Sinagi to Kojigo. There is also Renzokuwaza, which is a combination of techniques moving in the same direction. So I will demonstrate Ochigari into Osotigari. Carrying your opponent's mental in the same direction. An easy way to remember this is Renzoku Waza, Zoku, Zenzai. It's stupid, but it's how I remember it, and it's how everyone I know remembers it. So admit that to me. That's everything you need for your green belt grading in Britain. The coach may not ask you about every single thing in this grading, but if you know everything, I'm sure you'll pass. A heads up as well, now that you're getting to one of the higher grades, a dark colored belt, your coach might start asking you about things from the lower belts as well, so the red, yellow, and orange belt. I do have tutorials on those as well. Check those out, just as a reminder when you're going into this as well, so that you know all the Japanese and all the terminology you need. Thank you so much. Sorry about that.